Greetings. For as long as I can remember, I have loved words. Coming to believe at a young age that a word was worth a thousand pictures. I learned that words have profound power. So I began creating my own linguistic palette, mindful of the narratives and the thousand pictures I hoped my words might evoke. Later, as I sought to tell a whole new story of learning and schooling, I chose the words I believed might inspire and breathe life into its imagining and its emergence. As educators, we each bring unique understandings to the concept of the whole child. But what does whole really mean? Most definitions do not surprise us. Whole means complete and undivided. But one definition took my breath away. Whole also means not wounded, injured, or impaired. When we commit to educating the whole child, we commit to creating learning environments by design that ignite and nurture the totality of each child's multiple potentials, that engage all the ways they come to know, experience, and make sense of their world, that invite and honor the power of their minds and the power of their hearts in bodies and souls and spirits in learning and that integrate all the domains of knowledge, mathematics, science, wellness, the arts, and the humanities into a coherent, connected, and unified whole. But most importantly, educating whole children means that we commit to educating them into wholeness. Why is this so fundamental? Because the fearful world many children now see the reductive learning story they now live, the incoherent learning map they now follow, and the siloed learning landscape they now walk are injuring their imagination, impairing their creativity, and wounding their capacity for exploration, discovery, and wise world shaping. This reductive and splintered story is not the real one. The real story of learning is generative and life-affirming, and it is the only one that will reconnect our children to wholeness and enable them to embrace all of who they are. To capture this real story in the language of the poetic imagination and to invite you to create your own thousand pictures, I wrote a poem for us and our children. It is entitled, The Real Story. It happens imperceptibly, so silently, so slowly. We cannot know the time nor place. We cannot name the day nor moment. We cannot tell when we came to know that to become ourselves, we had to hide ourselves. We had to protect our souls, sequester our spirits, and learn to doubt our gifts and what we knew we really loved. We are not born alone, empty, or lost. We are born into the vibrant web of life, open to wonder, creativity, and the abundant possibilities of life and learning, breathing in the joy of exploration and discovery, singing with the wind, dancing with the trees, blossoming with the first buds of spring. We did not know what we could not or should not do or be. We were free to play, to wonder, to try out all of whom we might become, buoyed by our own imagination and embraced by a palpable yet transcendent field of connections and belonging so big it took our breath away. But slowly, new and older voices began to tell a different story, began to ask us to live a different story. They told us that wonder and awe and imagination were only for the young, that we would outgrow them, that the world they called real would soon teach us to change our minds about everything about the joy of exploration and discovery, 
about singing with the wind, about dancing with the trees, about blossoming with the first buds of spring, about belonging to the world, ourselves, and one another. And gradually, just as they said we would, we became the story they told us. The wind still embraced us, but we had no time for singing. The trees still danced, but we dared not join them. And the first blossoms of spring emerged without us becoming a part of their flowering. But gradually, as we had become lost, we were re-invited into the world our hearts, souls, and spirits had always known was truly real. A new story was being told, a story of meaning and mystery, of wholeness and wonder, of imagination and connections, of life and learning. And it was living this story that returned me to who I am. It was living this story that reconnected me to the natural world, to the song of the wind, to the dance of the trees, to the flowering of the first buds of spring. It was living this story that returned me to myself and told me that I am not alone, empty, or lost. It was living this story that brought me back to life and told me I belong. <laughs>